Our Old Testament scripture this week comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 to 15, and from chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Genesis 18, chapter 1 to 15, and chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Hear now the reading of God's word. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. And he said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let the little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to my servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and, and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour. Knead it and make bread and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and calf, and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind them. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child and now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh. But she was afraid, and he said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as, she, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham his son in his old age. At that time, at that time of which God had spoken to him, Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight years old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35, to chapter 10, verse 23. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35, to chapter 10, verse 23. Then Jesus went about all, all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, 
because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into, the, his, into his harvest. Chapter 10 Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, of, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go now, go now where go now where go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopards, cast out demons. You receive without payment, so give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your word, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. But truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the head for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, Gomorrah, on the day of judgment, than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them. But they will hand you over to council, councils and frog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before the governors and kings before because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When, when they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And when they persecute you in one town, flee to the other, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. The role of the earthly fathers have often been portrayed throughout the Bible as an authoritative figure who provides for the welfare and protection of his family. The biblical father figure often upholds the integrity of his faith and has keeper of the promise 
that gets passed on from generation to generation. Some of the notable biblical father-son relationships include Abraham to Isaac and Ishmael, then Isaac to Jacob and Esau, Esau, and then Jacob to his 12 sons or the 12 tribes of Israel. And from the New Testament, we hear stories about the father and his two prodigals and the prodigal son. Through these stories of earthly father-son relationship, they have also inspired us to reflect upon our own relationship with our Heavenly Father. As we read from the Old Testament lessons earlier from Genesis, we came upon the familiar story of Abraham, the father of many, who had received the covenant earlier from God of the Promised Land and many descendants to come. Our story today picked up where, when Abraham had just found out that he was going to be a father for the very first time at the advanced age of 100. And his wife, Sarah, was around 90 years old at, at that time. For those who are fathers, you can probably relate back to when you first discover that you are going to be a father. There was this great sense of excitement and perhaps a bit of a surprise or even confusion. I'm sure that was the case for Abraham as well, given the situations that he and his Sarah, he and his Sarah were in, for they were both barren and did not have any children up until now. How could this be humanly possible? That's a fair question for anyone to ask. For Abraham and Sarah, this indeed was a surprise announcement. Enough for Sarah to burst into a laughter or disbelief. Their biological clocks have stopped ticking for a while now. How could this be? They were ready to move on for the next stage of their life. Little did they know, little did they know that this was all part of God's plan and an ultimate testament of their faith. One could never find out, not, one could never underestimate what God may have in store next. Through this miracle birth, God demonstrated God's faithfulness and fulfill what God had promised, assuring both Abraham and Sarah that nothing is impossible with God. Now, typically, this is what we focus on whenever we come across the story of Abraham and Sarah. We've even labeled them as the patriarch and matriarch of faith. However, this time around, I'm more intrigued by the encounter between the messengers and Abraham. What can we learn about the character of Abraham as a role model of faith, but also as the head of the household, a devoted husband, and soon to be father of many? Instead of illustrating his patriarchal authority and power, our passage today shows us more of the domesticated or softer side of Abraham. When Abraham was encountered by those three travelers or visitors who came bearing the news of fertility from God, he greeted them at the door with great excitement and enthusiasm. Abraham showed these, those, those visitors hospitalities by offering them not only water to drink, but also for them to wash their feet after their long journey, and most likely also offer them a place to stay overnight as well, although that was not mentioned specifically, except that they 
proceeded to be on their way to the next town. As we read in our text, Abraham offered to bake, a, a, bake a bread for these visitors to eat. He ordered the, the calf to be slaughtered, calf that is tender and good. Yet he demonstrated his generosity, grace, and humility by referring himself as their servant. He could have asked one of his servants to do all this, but he chose to do it himself. How Abraham treated those total strangers and visitors clearly demonstrated the relationship he had with others, including his subordinates and his fellow kinsmen. Abraham demonstrated the level of faith and devotion that he had with God. He never underestimated what God had installed for him in fulfilling what God had promised. According to the Apostle Paul, God credited Abraham's faith as his righteousness. Those who professed the same faith as Abraham's are also adopted into the household of God and share the same covenant with God. Therefore, we are all descendants of Abraham and heirs according to God's promise made to Abraham. As you can see, under the new covenant made through Christ's death and resurrection, the concept of descendancies is beyond biological. Anyone who possessed the same faith in God as Abraham's is spiritually adopted as children of God. We have been engrafted into this family tree of God. Our paternal relationship with the Heavenly Father is no longer defined by who we belong to biologically, but instead by what and who we believe in. As we reread the story of Abraham and Sarah today, let us pause to meditate upon the following. What legacy are we being asked to pass along to our future generations? What efforts are we making through our faith in paving the way for the generations to come? Recently, I, I went to attend the Mets game at City Field out in Queens. For those who have visited the stadium, you know that when you enter the stadium main entrance, they call it the rotunda. There is this inscriptions of the famous quote from the legendary Brooklyn Dodger, Jackie Robinson. It reads, a life is not important except in the, in, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. A life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. What impact do our lives have upon others right now, as well as those who may follow us? How would we want to be remembered for by those who will come after us when our time here on earth is completed? By the virtue of our baptism, we have accepted this responsibility and commission to plant, plant the seed of our faith and nurture them into the fruitions in the lives of others. We have accepted the challenge to be used by God as God commissions us to serve others and the church as God's disciples. As you know, we do not necessarily have to be a mother or a father in order to make a difference or to be an influencer in other people's lives. Some of us may be an uncle or an aunt 
adopted parents, teachers, and or a coach, a community leader, and be a role model or inspirator to others. God has a calling upon each one of us to be influencer of others. How have our lives impacted lives of others and be a beacon of hope for them? Whatever that calling may be, God can and will use us. And God will challenge us to make our faith known for generations to come. And because of our common faith with Abraham, we now share the same covenant that God has established with Abraham. We have been called and commissioned. Our faith has been challenged in order to carry out God's mission here on earth. Sometimes even beyond our own expectations and capacities. In the New Testament lessons that we read from the Gospel of Matthew, we also came across a story of faith and legacy with the commissioning of Jesus' 12 core disciples. These disciples were being sent as laborers into the harvest field. And the harvest field was described as being plentiful with plenty of opportunities. One by one, the faith of those chosen disciples was called into actions as Jesus demonstrated to them through his, through his ministry. They were to go to the lost sheep and proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. They were to go cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Those disciples had the abilities to do all of these through the power of God. The question was, did they believe in themselves that they can do all those tasks as mentioned? But you notice that Jesus did not promise those disciples that their mission would be a success or a, a smooth sailing one. As Jesus warned the commissioned disciples, one can fully expect that there may be some rough currents and strong turbulence in hostile situations. Those disciples may not know precisely what God had installed for them. Nevertheless, they trusted in the Lord's promise and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus described those disciples as being sent as sheep into the midst of wolves. They may face various trials and hostilities, but Jesus offered them a few advices. Be wise as serpents. Be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. And when you speak in the defense of your faith through our lives, it is not us who are speaking, but the Spirit of our Father speaking through us. In other words, we need to stand vigilant and prepare for what is to come before us. In spite of our um, any unforeseen circumstances and the rising challenges. But rest assured that God will be with us no matter what trials and challenges we may encounter in life. Friends, on this Father's Day, as we honor all of our fathers and other father figures in our lives, let us remember what our ultimate calling is as God's commissioned disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
Amen.